This video is brought to you by me. And if you're watching this within the last week of November, you'll want to head to desktopmakes.com slash Black Friday to check out my amazing deals on my courses this week only for my Black Friday sale. All right, back to our regularly scheduled program. Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. Every year I do a Christmas theme design and print. However, I've never done a Thanksgiving one. I thought it would change that this year, so I headed over to Etsy in search of inspiration. Now, Thanksgiving themed objects tend to focus around the dinner table and enjoying a big feast with the family, and this led me here. A napkin ring. I know, I know, not the most exciting model, and you may not even use these, but bear with me for a minute. I think I can change your mind. Yes, this model was laser engraved, but we can also 3D print it. Now, why would you want to design and 3D print napkin rings? Well, two reasons. Reason number one, when you put someone's name on something, it becomes very special. These napkin rings serve two purposes. They neatly hold your napkin in place, but they also serve as fancy nameplates for your friends and family. Just think how special someone will feel when they see a beautiful setting prepared for them with their name on it. It's a special way of saying you belong here and here's your seat at the table. Reason number two. Although this looks like a very simple design, it will allow me to show you some powerful techniques in Fusion 360 when it comes to aligning text around the path. The text on path feature is relatively new, but opens up so many creative possibilities. Whether you're looking to 3D print, laser cut, CNC engrave, or even do some metal casting of text on a circular object, such as a sign, a custom coin, or yes, a napkin ring. I printed these on my Prusa Mini and wanted to go with two different colors with each model. That way, the name would stand out. Prusa Slicer makes this super easy by simply selecting the layer you want to swap the color. When the print gets to that layer, it'll simply warn you by beeping and you follow the prompt on the screen to insert the new filament. It will pick up right where it left off, leaving you with a smooth change of colors. Now all you have to do is provide the napkin, the plate, and well, the food of course. If you decide to make these, just make sure you double check your list and don't forget anyone or at least have your printer on standby just in case. At 2mm layer height, these printed in 30 minutes. Of course, you can always go up to 0.3mm layer height and print them even faster. Now, for those interested in seeing the Fusion 360 design, I'll go into the design tutorial and show you some valuable techniques on how to get text positioned exactly where you want it. All right, I'll begin by creating a sketch here on the XY plane. And I'm gonna start this with two circles. Straightforward design, right? So we're gonna come in with uh, under the create menu, grab our first circle here, center diameter circle. Start it at the origin. And we're gonna go, I want this to be about an inch and a half for that inner diameter, but I am working in millimeters, so let's make that 37 millimeters there. Now, the temptation here may be to come in with a second circle, right? So if we grab another circle, come out here, and we'll make this, let's say, 60 millimeters. Okay, that looks good so far. I can now stop and extrude this, but I'm gonna show you why going with that second circle here is a bad idea. So let's say you 3D print this and you come back and you say, you know what, I want this inner diameter here to be a little bit bigger. It's just too tight around the napkin. So you come in and then you change this. You say, well, instead of uh, 37, let's go to 50. And you see the problem there. So the edge here it gets thinner because of this second circle is locked at 60. So then you have to come in and make that bigger, maybe go to 70. And this just becomes a problem. And it's one of those things that you want to keep in mind if you want to come back and be able to easily edit your sketch and you want certain relationships to hold. So a better way to approach this would be to not create a second circle here. So I'm going to select it and hit delete. Let's bring this back to 37. And the way to go here is to come in with the offset tool. So go to modify and go to offset. Choose our circle there and we'll give that an offset of 15 millimeters. So that way, if you know you want this thickness to be 15 millimeters, it's always going to be linked to this inner diameter there. So if I come back and change this to 50, 
this will remain 15 no matter what. It makes it so that when I come back to change my design, things don't break because it's sort of glued to this inner circle, right? That relationship is there. It's one of those things, it may seem like a very simple concept here, but it's one of those things that will come back and save you hours of frustration later. If you learn to think like this when you're designing, what parts do you want to stay connected? Okay, so now that we have that, let's bring this back down to 37. We can extrude this, finish. I'm gonna go with three millimeters here. You can go as thick as you want on that. And that gives me my ring. Okay, so now that I have my ring there, let's go ahead and create a sketch on that surface. So create a sketch on the surface here. And normally what I like to do is to project the edges so that I can untangle the visibility of the body there. I think it just makes it a little bit easier to see when I'm sketching uh, on this um, sort of grayed out surface. So P for project, I'm gonna select this surface, click OK, untangle bodies. Okay, now I wanna sketch within here in this boundary. So we're gonna use the text on path tool. And we want that path to go around the text here. So again, a circle seems like it would be a, an appropriate choice. So let's try that route. We'll create another circle here and start it in the center and we'll place this just roughly where I want my text to be. About here looks good. So I'll say 45 millimeters in diameter. And let's take that and hit X to make it a construction line. Okay, now we can come in with our text tool. So create down to text. And we'll get two options, right? We have a regular text option and a text on path. Well, we're gonna go with the text on path here. And let me just kind of reset these selections here. I'm gonna choose the first option for placement, untitled the flip, and we have something like this. So it looks like it, it wants to throw this text on the bottom. So let's, let me describe a little bit of what I wanna do here. So this is gonna function as a uh, napkin ring and also a little like table setting name card thing. So it's gonna tell people where to sit and it's gonna be really cool because it's gonna have their names 3D printed on it. So I wanted to have the names, let's say the name to go on top. And on the bottom, I wanted to, you know, say something like thankful, you know, because it's Thanksgiving. Okay, so we'll start here. I'm gonna go ahead and um, we'll make this one for Anne. Anne's gonna sit here. But it's placing Anne's name, it seems random, just like on the side here. And I wanna try to drag this to the top and it won't let me. Uh, and I'm not seeing anything here that lets me drag it, right? So, okay, well maybe I can do this. I'll click OK and then click on the name. I'm gonna left click, right click, and go to move copy. And let's try this, the orbit. Okay, yeah, so that will let me get it kind of, you know, maybe close enough, not exact, but it'll get it on top. I can click OK and there we have it. And I'll double click to get back in my sketch here. Okay, now I wanted to say um, thankful on the bottom. So maybe if I do a space here and do thankful and it's not exactly where I want it to be but maybe I can solve that by putting some spaces here and get it lined up okay and that's not perfect but it looks like it'll work and you know if you're looking to get something exact uh, you can try this route um, but you know I've got something better for you this isn't gonna work and it may work for something like this or if you're not trying to be super picky, but if you want something that's very precise, um, this is not the way to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and let's just get out of here and I'll show you the right way to approach this. And the secret here, let me delete this. Secret here, or I don't know if it's a secret, but the approach you wanna take is to use arcs instead of circles. And here's why. I'm gonna create an arc. It's gonna be a three point arc. I'm just gonna place it anywhere here in the middle. And it doesn't really matter how you place it because now we're gonna come in and use our concentric constraint and say, make this arc concentric to this circle. And there we have it. So now we can take that arc, move it, and it's gonna be concentric. And I can give it a dimension now, so D for diameter, and go ahead and give it a radius. So make it, let's say, 20 millimeters. Uh, maybe that's a little too tight. 21 looks good. Hit escape, select it, and make it a construction line. Now I'm going to go to create down to text. I'm going to select the path here for my arc, and let's go ahead and try Anne's name again. 
So it comes in upside down, and when that does it, you just kind of have to play with these settings here. So it's um, we want it to be above the text there. So you know, above or below, just click whichever one gets it to where you want it, and then your other options will be your flip options here, and you know you can horizontal or vertical flip it to get it where you want. Okay, so it's kind of where we want it, it's a little to the right, um, and we can do stuff here like increase character spacing. And I can play around with that, and you can see as I change that, the spacing on the characters here um, increases. Make that 20. Um, but I'm going to show you a better way. Let's not go with that. And instead, we're going to click fit to path here. And notice when I do that, it's going to get rid of character spacing. So you don't have that option anymore. So now that we, we've done that, we don't even get the, the sender options. But I think this is a little bit easier um, to work with because now all I have to do is click OK. Watch this. If I expand this and bring it back, I can change the letter spacing. But here's the gold here. If I select this edge here, I'm going to grab, actually deselect everything first, click on the white area so nothing is selected, and then grab your horizontal slash vertical constraint, um, hover your mouse roughly where the center of that arc is, and then hold shift. You'll see you'll get this little uh, constraint uh, signal there, a little uh, triangle, and then X. Click on that, and then click on the center here of the circle, and that's going to lock the center there. So now, no matter how you move this, you, now you, you can only change the spacing, but this is now centered. So it gets you precision that we didn't have before. Um, so we are now you know, exactly where we need to be, and then we can just tweak the spacing to where we're comfortable with it. Click OK, and if you want to go back, double click and maybe change this, uh, the height of it, make it a little bit bigger. That's good. Now that we made it bigger, we're going to just go back and increase the spacing a little more. Okay, that's good. And now we don't have to um, come in and try to, you know, use the space bar to um, try to get thankful to fit there. What we're going to do is just create another arc here. Create two arcs, right? So this will be a second arc, three-point arc. I'll just create an arc here somewhere in the bottom. Um, go ahead and make it concentric. So choose the arc, choose the circle. Hit escape, select the arc, make it a construction line. D for dimension, we'll give it a uh, radius here again, we'll do 21. Now we can go to create, down to text, select our path here, which is our arc. And now we can go ahead and type thankful. There it is. So again, if this was flipped in any way, you can just um, use these buttons here to get it how you want it. Um, that looks pretty good there. I'm going to change that height again to 10 and click OK. Our fit to path is already selected because it selects the last uh, option you had. And we're going to do that same thing, right? So we can come in and we can deselect everything, vertical constraint, hold shift, find that midpoint right there, and then click the center. Now when we change the spacing, the letters here, or the word stays in line, all we're doing is changing the, the letter spacing. So get it to where you want it. Okay. And you can continue to do that to align things exactly where you want it. Okay, so those two are straightforward because you're using the vertical alignment tool to get them um, exactly where you want them. Um, but let's um, show one more example. What if you wanted something that was a very specific position here that wasn't vertically aligned? Yeah, okay, here's how I would go about that. So I'll create a, a line, for example, maybe go straight up. Take that line, make it a construction line, and then I'll draw another line. And for this line, if you have a very specific um, angle, for example, you can go ahead and type that in. So D for dimension, click both lines. Let's say you want that to be 55 degrees here. Okay, now that we have that line there, we can proceed with our normal approach that we've been taking. So we'll go ahead and create an arc here, three point arc, create an arc here, make it concentric, uh, make it a construction line, give it a dimension here, uh, 23 millimeters. Let's go a little higher, 25. Okay, now I can go ahead and go ahead and create a text on that line. Let's bring it in a little bit so it doesn't overlap with our other stuff. All right, so next we'll go to create down to text and select our path here. Let's say we want to enter a number, I don't know, 101. Okay, keep everything the same. 
click OK. I'm gonna change our spacing there so we see it. Let's bring that dimension down a bit so it actually fits. And what I can do here now, instead of a vertical constraint, because it's not vertical, I can grab a point here, find it, it'll snap right to the midpoint. You kind of, if you zoom in, you can see that little triangle there. Snap it there. And now I can grab my coincident constraint, choose that point, choose this line, and there it is. So now this is exactly where I want it. Maybe I, you know, if I want that angle to be different, I can just drive it with this angle. So maybe 60 degrees. And now, you know, you're getting precision here that you didn't have before. Instead of relying on the space bar here to try to align text, you can just enter, you know, a dimension here and an angle and you've got exactly where you want it. So, okay, um, let me delete this. I just wanted to throw this in, kind of thought about it last minute. If you want something other than a vertical alignment there, you can use this approach. Okay, so now we're all set. I'll hit finish sketch. Um, let's bring up body into view, E4 extrude, select both of these names, and I'm just gonna go with 0 0.8 millimeters, enter, and there we have it. So now that I'm looking at this, um, that F, uh, maybe it looks a little close to that K there. So very easy to tweak, right? We can just go in, let's bring this out a little bit more. Okay, finish sketch. And that's how I would approach circular text when you need the positioning to be exact.